Katie, uh, Abe, thank you so much for your time. I got I started this series, and I'm so happy that I get privileged to watch some of the episodes. I, I, I couldn't stop watching it. <laughs> really, really good. Uh, Abe, tell me a little bit about your inspiration in, in writing this. Well, I've always wanted to create a, I really wanted to set a show in the world of Slim Aarons. It's, it's a, you know, as an artist and a photographer, I'm just fascinated by the work and I'm fascinated by, you know, the, the beautiful people and beautiful places doing beautiful things. And, and, and more than that, those, those, those photographs stand as works of art because there's a tension in them, because there's no sense of the outside world. And you know, when, when those photos were taken, uh, the Vietnam War is raging. There's social unrest, you know. Uh, the first, the, the riot at Stonewall is is happening just off screen. So I, I uh, you know, obviously taking the book as a jumping off point, I was uh, really inspired to, you know, take this iconoclastic woman that Juliet had created in the novel and throw her into uh, this world that I'd always been fascinated by. And that was sort of the, just from an inspiration standpoint, sort of the jumping off point. But Katie was the one who initially identified the book and brought it to uh, Laura Dern and her producing partner, Jamie Lemons, who uh, then looped in Tay Taylor, the director of our pilot, who reached out to me. And that's, 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 that's a wonderful, formidable, uh, collaborative group of people to want to get involved in. And luckily, they, 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 they bought into um, the, the alterations that I wanted to make in the adaptation. And uh, a wonderful alchemy uh, between us uh, ensued. And part of that beauty is your lead, your lead actress, uh, Kristen Wiig, who has this amazing balance of like just being witty, funny, a little dark, and, and just seems like she was the perfect uh, cast for Maxine. Uh, Katie, you want to talk a little bit about her and what she brought to the project? Because I, I think she's so great in the series. Oh, she really is. And how it came about is in attaching Laura Dern as an executive producer, Laura called Kristen up and they've always wanted to work together. And Laura really brought Kristen in. And then, of course, Kristen read Abe's script and fell in love with it. And she really brings it all. And there was sort of nobody else. That was who we envisioned. Laura made the call. Kristen read the material, <clears throat> met with Abe, and uh, we had our Maxine. Hey, we talked a little bit about just being in that world. How, how much fun did these actors have playing these characters? Because these are some of the types of characters that a lot of kids play. If you're trying to be, you know, snooty and upper class and champagne and, and things like that. How, how great was that on set? Well, we, uh, what I said to the writers, especially as, we, as our cast started to develop and we, we started adding icon after icon to the cast, so let's leave nothing on the field. Let's make sure that um, we've got this colorful rainbow of performers. Let's make sure that everybody gets a chance to shine and do what they do best. Uh, um, you know, and I think everybody was inspired uh, by the sets and the costumes and the world of it. Um, you know, I was I was always so excited to see the actresses walk onto set in their costumes, and it would always be a surprise. You know, what Alex had dreamed up with them. Um, and to see them, you know, take their place in these beautiful rooms that John Carlos uh, and Ellen Reed created for them to play in, it was uh, for for this little gay boy from Oklahoma, it was a dream come true. Can you tell me a little bit of some of the challenges in bringing and putting together this world? Uh, the colors are so beautiful, uh, and then like and, and everything else as far as the production was. No, go ahead. Oh, um, well, we had an amazing partner in Apple. And so by hiring Alex and John Carlos and with Abe kind of creating that vision and having a really dynamic and supportive partner in Apple to help us realize our dreams in terms of, of producing this. So the challenges, there was some, you know, calculus with the schedule because it, as you can imagine with this cast, they're all very um, sought after. But we had an incredible line producer working with the production team at Apple and figuring out, you know, how to put this on. But I think the goal, and I think Apple really supported this, was giving Abe the toolkit for his writing and directing several episodes to be able to kind of not have to worry about the the what it takes to sort of put this on. And, and Apple really provided that um, that safe space to produce this enormous show. What are you hoping audiences take away after watching Palm Royale? Well, I certainly hope they're moved. I hope they have a good time. 
Uh, first and foremost, I hope they're entertained. Um, this is a this is a show that 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 uh, wants to be liked. You know, it's uh, it's very winning. It is its heart is in the right place, and even as it's raising really important cultural questions and um, uh, themes of identity and belonging and uh, sexuality and and uh, race and uh, you know, it's it's all there. Um, but at the same time, it's just a good time. It is a great time. Uh, Katie and Abe, thank you so much for spending a few minutes for me, with me. Thank you for the series. I'm enjoying it quite a bit, and I hope to talk to you again. All thank right. you. Take good care.